hay lista de espera. Y no es para ir al médico, ni para que nos atiendan en el registro civil. No, no se lo van a creer. ¿Para qué es, Patricia? Es para comprar oro, como lo oyes. Lingotes como este que tengo yo aquí y que pesan nada más y nada menos que un kilo. Aunque si te decides por esta fórmula de inversión, y más puedes hacerlo, empezar con cantidades un poquito más pequeñas. Lo único certero es que el valor del oro se ha duplicado en los últimos cinco años. Así que, ¿tú cuánto crees que podría costar hoy, a esta hora, un lingote como este de un kilo, Inma? Patricia, Vamos a ver, en euros. Yo es que no he comprado en mi vida oro, no podía... no sé, a ver, ¿cuánto cuesta? Te aseguro que pesa, pesa. ¿No te atreves con una cantidad? A ver, a ver. No, no, no dímela, dímela. No. A ver. Casi 25.000 euros a esta hora, hoy. Así que nada más, nada más lo que tengo en la mano. ¿Y las eh? monedas, De todas formas, eh, las monedas son mucho más pequeñitas. Además, esta es una moneda australiana que se llama la pepita australiana, pero esto no es numismática. Eh? Esto se ha convertido en un refugio para todos aquellos que han escarmentado con la volatilidad de la bolsa, que además, eh, bueno, pues el ladrillo, ya sabes, entre un ladrillo y una monedita de oro como esta, ¿dónde va a parar? Mucho más bonita, ¿verdad? Así que esta onza pesa unos 30 gramos, esta es la, la medida, eh, cotiza en realidad el oro en dólares eh, por onza, y esta puede costar, Marta Domínguez, ¿cuánto, cuánto dinero? Pues actualmente unos 770 euros la onza. 770 euros. Marta Domínguez sabe además que en esta oficina, la única tienda de España donde podemos comprar oro, eh, hay listas de espera, hay gente esperando eh, para comprar oro. Tanto es así, tanto lo habéis notado. Sabéis que ha incluso sin existencia. Sí, por supuesto, este stock que tenemos aquí ahora mismo va a salir esta misma tarde para clientes de toda España. Hay mucha demanda, eh, los inversores y los pequeños habladores están un poco asustados respecto a la volatilidad de la bolsa, como tú decías, la caída del mercado inmobiliario, están acudiendo en masa a un valor seguro como el oro. Patricia, pues increíble. aquí lo tenéis, ya sabéis. Lista eh, de la para fiebre del oro que ha llegado a España. Lingotes. ¡Qué barbaridad! Como nadie se fía de los vaivenes de la economía, quienes tienen dinero para invertir lo hacen en lingotes de oro, un metal que está exento de IVA y que en tiempos de incertidumbre se revaloriza. En España hay listas de espera para comprar oro. Poco tiempo antes de que en Madrid los hombres anuncio tuvieran los días contados, podíamos leer con letras bien claras colgadas de su espalda el reclamo que las casas de compra-venta de oro hacían a sus clientes. Compro oro, vendo oro. A lo largo de este tiempo, este metal, exento de IVA, ha preservado su valor como un bien seguro y buena prueba de ello es que el lingote de oro se revaloriza frente a otras inversiones. El pasado mes de septiembre se acercaron para comprar oro en empresas especializadas en su venta, como esta de Valencia, unos mil clientes, cuatro veces más que el año pasado. Frío, pero tangible y seguro, gracias a las excelentes condiciones por las que pasa el mercado de los metales preciosos, el oro puede venderse en cualquier banco del mundo, salvo en los españoles, más interesados en los últimos tiempos en las hipotecas. Un solo dato lo dice todo. En lo que llevamos de año, el oro se ha revalorizado un 24%. La última cotización en la bolsa de Nueva York ha superado los 850 dólares la onza. Hoy por hoy, hay lista de espera en España para comprar oro. Los lotes que llegan desde la Casa de la Moneda de Austria y de Suiza se agotan enseguida. La, el aumento de la demanda de oro físico en toda Europa eh, a raíz de las últimas crisis de las entidades bancarias ha hecho que se agoten las reservas de stocks de oro disponible en Europa, tanto en bancos comerciales como en empresas parecidas a la nuestra. El perfil del que compra oro varía mucho. Los hay que adquieren solo 5 gramos para un regalo, 50 kilos o incluso todos sus ahorros. No tengo necesidad del dinero en este momento y en vez de tenerlo muerto de asco en un banco con peligro de que se vaya... Eh, cada vez más vemos a grandes inversores que se acercan con pedidos de 200.000 o 300.000 euros y que quieren... And one of the things about being an American is I find Americans pretty pompous and arrogant saying, well, this won't happen to America. And, uh, you know, if we're really going to study financial education, it does take in history. And we have, we have seen throughout history financial collapses, booms and busts caused because governments manipulate money supply. So right now, the United States, for the very first time in about probably 100 years, is now starting to sweat 
is my dollar for real, right? Yes. So what do you, what do you think is happening? Uh, there's a major panic going on with the Federal Reserve and the banking systems, like I've said before. They've created in just the past uh, 18 months, they've, they've created about 150 percent, one and a half times, more paper dollars than they created in the first 200 years of the United States. So they've added one and a half times more currency to, the, to the, what's called base money, the paper dollars. This, they're, they're trying to prevent a disaster that they see out there right now. But the reason I have Marco and David here, and Kim, is you guys have actually lived through what's called devaluations, or there's another word coming up that people hear more of, it's called sovereign default, sovereign default. A sovereign default means a country goes bankrupt. You know, they say we can't pay our bills. That's individual bankruptcy, but a sovereign default is like a country of Greece says, that's it, or Turkey could go, and they said, that's it. But you guys have seen it in Mexico, right? Well, in the, in the early 80s, I remember the government took over the banks, and then they made it illegal to have dollars for the citizens. They froze in your dollars accounts, and then they devaluate the dollar, so you end up having like 10% or 20% of your real money. I mean, I remember my father, all his savings accounts will be in dollars, because he thought that dollars will be safe, you know? But the and government actually says you can't hold dollars? No, yep. the government, for, well, first they took over the banks. They nationalized the banks. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first, first the, the banks used to be private, and then the government took over the banks. And then once the government owned the banks, then they froze in all your dollar accounts. So suddenly, if you had a hundred thousand, uh, let's say you have a thousand dollars, well, they give you 12,000 pesos. But then the following day, those 12,000 pesos is only $100. So you wow. lost 90% wow. of your value. Yeah. Wow. And so you that's... wake up in the morning and this has already happened, right? Yes. You don't yeah. get any warning. So you lost $900 by the devaluation. Immediately, yeah. overnight. And yeah. what happened is most businesses, they close the following day because they need to remark their pricing. So business owners, a lot of business owners, and I actually have several friends that did a lot of money because they had a lot of inventory and they just sell it with a new pricing. It was horrible, especially if David and I grew up by the border, Tijuana, yeah. San Diego. And uh, it was horrible because you were making pesos, and then the next day the peso would, would be worth half. And you had debt in dollars. Like right. if you bought a car, you were, you, know, you were paying your car in dollars, and you were making half of your salary, and, and you earned double of, of you know, it's horrible. So Just a nightmare. your debt went up tenfold with that devaluation, basically. Exactly. Right? And it would happen yeah. again and again, and it so, felt so unfair. So the go I think that the government planned it very well because I remember very well that my father used to have a part of his money in San Isidro in the, in, the, in the U.S. and part of his money in Mexico. And then they raised the interest rates in Mexico that it was so attractive for you to invest your dollars in Mexico's oh. banks. Before, before, <laughs> before they before, did all this. Before they took over the banks and before that. So suddenly so they you, got say, all these US dollars. you say, oh, I'm going to bring my money back to Mexico because I'm making a lot of return. Wow. The, the interest rates are 20, 25%. Yeah. I mean, I'm making a lot of money. Put in, it was better. They, they played in a way that it was better to put your money in the bank even to, than creating a business or something because they were paying 25, 30%. So suddenly when they got all those dollars there, then oh, they close wow. it. So yeah. what advice would you have for the people who have never been through one of these crises? Well, well, first of all, I, I think you, you have to get as many assets as possible because I realized that everybody who was a business owner or had real estate or had gold and silver, they end up on the top of the food chain. I mean, if you are protected using all those assets, uh, who cares what happened to the currency? I mean, the real estate is what eventually is going to hold, hold their value and gold and silver is going to hold the value. And if you have a business, you can always, you know, just get a, you're going to just change pricing all the time. I mean. And, uh, I mean, David was, uh, was raised in the Jewish community, so he had more <laughs> financial education than I did in <laughs> <being> Catholic. <laughs> so he has a way of, a, of you know, unfair advantage over me being Catholic, you know what I mean? So for me, it's just grasping, grasping the concept of the currency not being the real money. We've never been here in the history of the world. If the U.S. dollar goes, the world goes with it. Is that correct? Absolutely. It backs every other currency on the planet right now. So what they saw in Mexico will repeat all over the world worldwide. So please get smart. If you don't have any knowledge, buy some gold and silver. <laughs>